Hey everyone, it's Jessie from Bear Flower Farm. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been harvesting tulips consistently for the last few weeks and it's been really good exercise for me to actually approach florists because I have stems. Now, a few of you have reached out asking me about just a progress update on my florist cold calling venture. So this was supposed to be a three part series. Part one dropped a few weeks ago. I will link it in the description, but I am actually going to combine part two and part three into this video. Part two was about my availability sheet and how I created a, a visual availability sheet. I will actually have a downloadable template below. It was actually created in PowerPoint, so you will need PowerPoint in order to utilize this template. But what I really want to focus this video on is one, my experience, which is actually both before and immediately after I walk out of a couple of floor shops to give you an idea of how the conversation went. Two, I want to talk about some other routes you can go to connect with florists if you don't want to cold call or walk in. And three, what worked best for me and you know who I'm working with, how I got in connection with them, and a little bit of my Valentine's Day plan with florists and retail. And then last but not least, I'll get a little bit direction on the template. So without further ado, let's rewind back a few weeks to late December when I was off from work uh, during the holidays and I was able to basically walk into florist shop. What is up everyone? It is time to hustle today. So I have more stems that I harvested post my market and I wanted to try the florist route. So I actually just sold 40 stems to a fellow a flower farmer, but I still have 20 left. So we're gonna go in and basically cold call a florist and see if she's willing to buy locally grown winter forest tulips. So I am back at home. Uh, when I made that first video, I had a very specific florist in mind. And I'll talk a little bit later about how I chose that florist. But of course, they were not open. It was by appointment only. So I swear on Google, it said that they were open uh, six days a week. In any case, uh, they weren't open. So I pulled up Google Maps and really looked for the next florist, which was about half a mile away. I mean, there were literally five florists within like a five mile radius. So went off to the next florist and had a really good conversation. So I did not sell any bunches. I left two bunches. So they are, um, each bunch is a stem of 10 and they were the cabana tulip parrots or cabana pear tulips so I left him two bunches and I felt like we had a really productive conversation he sent me his email address he wants to know what my availability list is but the spiel went something along the lines of hi my name is Jesse I am a local flower farmer I'm actually down about five miles away from you growing um, I grow on a small scale focusing on the winter and shoulder seasons and I focus on specialty tulips so I grow parrots I grow doubles grow fringe and some singles but primarily focusing on um, the specialty ones and want to see if you have an interest in buying locally grown sustainably grown stems and the guy was like yes I do so actually before I had that spiel I asked hey can I talk to the guy who uh, procures flowers for your 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 florist department here um, so it was a floor center but they also have like a storefront with like um, you know some other stuff like I wouldn't call them tchotchkes but not necessarily always flower related so they are florists with a retail shop that sells stuff that's non-flower so I want to make sure I got the right person and I happened to get one of the owners there so the conversation went something along the lines of yeah like we've actually got a population that comes here a clientele that is interested in sustainably source blooms last year we worked with a local farmer he's very transparent with me in the sense that uh, you know, some of the prices that local uh, tries to fetch is a little bit out of reach for them. So it was good for me to get a better understanding, right? And of course, before I went, I brushed up on the prices from the Boston Terminal Ornamental um, wholesale sheet. And I knew going in that bunches of 10 for parrots were selling at $14. So it allowed me to have a educated conversation with him, showing him that I knew my numbers and, you know, I made a point to him saying that, hey, like, you know, this time of year, I'm never going to be able to compete with the wholesalers. Really, like, I'm never going to compete with the wholesalers on price, right? So obviously you're getting a better quality product, um, but at the same time, you're also getting, um, 
you know, like local grown, right? So it's, it's local, it's a better quality product. And I told them about the higher inputs that I have in terms of needing to provide provide a uh, supplemental lighting for growing tulips in my basement as well as just a higher labor input for me right field grown tulips you plant them you kind of forget it and then you go harvest but with hydroponics or with uh forcing winter tulips there is a level of labor that field tulips don't have so i made that very clear to him and you know i told him hey like it's going to be at least a 40 cent difference between a uh, field grown versus forced and to be honest like i would probably have pushed that price a little bit higher um but in any case we'll see what happens so i basically said i'm selling them for a dollar 80 a stem in bunches of 10 so 18 dollars per 10 Ideally, it would have been $20, but also my stems have been pretty short because it is so um, early in the season. So in any case, I feel pretty positive about this. Look, if nothing results out of this, that's totally fine because I got a lot of valuable research or information out of this florist. I got a better understanding of just how much he's willing to pay, what type of people are coming in. We talked about what people are shopping for now, um, the different trends in traffic between COVID and now. Things have changed a bit. So all that for 20 stems, which if you think about the cost of acquiring a bulb and the labor inputs, like that was $10, right? So it was really worth that investment for me and hopefully leaving him the two bunches of tulips. He can see, you know, they're going to get more um, color. They're going to get bigger. They're are gonna like he obviously knows what pear tulips are right but um i'm actually wondering if he's actually ever gotten them locally grown at this time of year and seeing the difference in quality so the goal is all the tulips that i have coming up unless if i proactively get customers reaching out to me i'm gonna use them and i'm gonna go visit florists there's so many florists around and i'm going to basically try to see if they're interested in buying wholesale from me. All right, guys, another day, another florist, and this time we've got some Allison Bradleys. So I'm gonna use the same type of script pitch and we'll see what happens. All right, so I am back rejected, but not rejected in a bad way. I mean, we had a pretty quick conversation. I talked to the owner of the shop um, and he flat out said that they don't do a lot of stuff with tulips except for around Easter. Now, I'm not totally surprised because looking at their Google page, their photos and stuff, you can kind of tell that they're a little bit more wire servicey type of florist, but they were in the area. So I decided to drop by. He asked me how much I would charge for them because he actually he, he liked them. Um, I mean, they're very pretty doubles. And so I had mentioned $1.80 a stem, which comes out to 18 per 10. And he goes, yeah, that's a little bit higher. So I learned from him that he's really buying single stem bunches from, from Holland. And so, you know, like when it's, uh, when the market is saturated with single stems from Holland, I mean, you're getting each stem at basically 70 cents. 70 cents and they're not doing a ton with the specialty type of tulip so really this was a good lesson in just wrong kind of flora stand your ground and obviously do not let these go for 70 to 80 cents a stem because then you won't be making any money all right, so I just got back from visiting another florist. I had to put money into the meter, so I wasn't sure how long it was gonna take. I have about 10 minutes left. So figured I'd do a recap. Now, what a contrast from the last florist. This is a florist that basically has maybe two to three walk-ins a day. They stop doing wire services. So in my first video, I talked about just how a lot of florists will take, florists, a lot of florists will take orders online from like Teleflora, FTD, 1-800-Flowers. She was actually telling me that for one Valentine's Day, she crunched the numbers and after all the work that they did, they basically only made $30. And that's because of the platform fees that they have to pay on a monthly basis, as well as a 20% commission. So they scrapped it and they, now they specialize in just basically events and special occasions. And for Valentine's Day, they do have a pretty good following. They actually, um, you know, follow up with everyone who has ordered from them for Valentine's Day. And she said that tulip are actually really popular for them during Valentine's Day. So that gives me a lot of hope. I left a bunch of flowers for them. When I talked to her about pricing, you know, she didn't really have much of a reaction, but she didn't have at least a negative reaction like 
the last florist did, right? And that makes sense because if they're doing wire services, there's no way they can pay $1.80 to $2 a stem, um, especially after the conversation I just had with that woman. The other thing that I realized was that, you know, I talked to someone who is not the owner. She's not someone who purchases flowers and she gave me a lot of information. I mean, she told me about just the weddings that they do, including the venues in terms that, uh, in which they are the preferred vendor, that kind of stuff. The owner was a bit in a rush. She, um, she had just come back from something, had to be on a phone call. So I didn't really get a chance to talk with her. And that was really valuable, right? Because I got a lot of information from her about just what they do to types of events. I mean, she even asked me like, what do I have for the spring? When I, when I mentioned that I'm doing ranunculus, she was really excited because she said that they found a couple of growers, but they just never have enough inventory of ranunculus, right? So, you know, even if I don't sell them any tulips here, I think that just keeping in touch with them could be really good in the long term, right? So it goes to tell you that even if you don't get the person who purchases flowers or the owner, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You might actually be able to get a little bit more information from someone else who is more willing to talk. So as you can see, I had some, I guess, success slash failures in my cold calling. And it was a really good experience overall because, you know, it kind of reinforced some of the stuff that I already knew, including the fact that not all florists are created equal. So despite me doing that, I really, I think at the end of the day, had one florist who was truly interested and I caught them not at the greatest time. I was able to speak to um, the person who is an employee, not necessarily the owner. The owner seemed to be a bit in a rush, right? So one of the other things that I've kind of just like learned the last few weeks, um, reading Facebook groups online where florists are in is that, you know, they do appreciate a heads up, right? So I probably won't be doing as much cold calling in the future but that being said you know I even have not had a chance to reach back out to that florist because I don't have enough stems so let's actually talk about some other routes that I've been pursuing reaching florists and some of them have actually been a little bit more successful so the first one is I actually found a Facebook group it's called American Farmer Selling Direct to Florists it's a Facebook group you do have to get approved but it is a Facebook group that tries to connect florists uh, with flower farmers um, especially those who are local to each other and I had posted on there that I was forcing tulips you know not a lot of people have flowers this time of year so I'm not shipping my flowers yet but there is definitely a demand for those who are interested in shipping you know I'm trying my best not to ship because it almost defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do in terms of having a lower carbon footprint to grow things locally. But, you know, if I'm shipping to like Philadelphia, which is about two hours away, I'm a little bit more OK with that than, you know, shipping halfway across the country. Right. But in any case, that post got me a lot of attention and it got me some direct messages from florists all the way up in Connecticut. Um, down to the shore of New Jersey. So a little bit outside of the radius range that I would have liked. But at the same time, you know, if I have a lot of stems and they're willing to buy a lot of stems for an event and it works out, you know, I'm willing to drive and some people are also willing to drive too, right? So I was actually able to make a few connections that way. I had one florist who had basically on the spot pre-committed to buying a hundred stems from me for Valentine's Day. And again, it was really useful being able to on the spot when they messaged me on Facebook for me to say, here is my availability list. Here is what I'm gonna have for Valentine's Day. Here is the price and then they can go from there. There are actually a few florists that I still need to follow up with it's just hard because I am starting to learn that I did not, or it's not I didn't grow enough stems, it's I did not secession plan them in a way that makes them optimal for me to sell them all during Valentine's Day. So I'm actually gonna talk about that in a separate video. But that Facebook group was really helpful and I would really encourage you to go onto Facebook and um, apply for that group if you feel like that is gonna be helpful for you. Now, the second thing that I signed up for is something called Rooted Farmers. Now, I signed up for this last year 
as a buyer so connecting myself to other flower farmers because if you remember i had just moved to this space and i did not have enough stems for my first market so i participated as a buyer and this time around i signed up to be basically a seller now the seller end of rooted farmers is very different if you're a buyer everything is free but as a seller you do have to pay for it so there is a monthly fee i believe it's something like 13 dollars a month is the basic plan that i am currently paying for and the reason why i signed up for it is twofold one i wanted to see if it would be an easier inventory management system than using squarespace so i do have a squarespace website where i am doing e-commerce on there so primarily i'm selling ranunculus corms i sold some tulip bulbs on there but I am also getting bites for bouquets on there. So people who are local coming to my website who don't want to pay cash or Venmo, and I totally get it because sometimes you just want documented receipt and there's a bit more trust established when you give them a link to a website. So people are coming through there, um, putting an order in a week, two weeks out, telling me when they want to pick up that kind of stuff. But it is a pain in the butt to update inventory that turns quickly. So if you're selling the same thing over and over again, um, it's a lot easier to manage your inventory. Um, and it's not like you have to update photos all the time. If you're constantly churning through various varieties of stems, it's a dynamic type of inventory management. You know, it's a bit of a pain to continuously go into a website platform to update it. So I wanted to see if the Rooted Farmers platform would be a better way for me to manage it. And honestly, right now it's still TBD. One of the things that was holding me back from signing up for Rooted Farmers was the fact that they have what I feel to be an outrageous transaction fee. It is 7.9% plus I think 10%. Now what happens is Rooted Farmers is taking a cut of that, like 3.7%. I would think like 3.5%. And then the credit card processing gateway called Stripe is taking another 3.7%. So, or 3. Point something percent. So for something like Shopify, where I sell soap, you know, it is really like a 3% transaction fee because Shopify manages both the platform as well as the credit card gateway. So they waive your credit card fee um, if you or your platform fee if you go through Shopify. But in this case, Rooted Farmer is using a third-party service. So not only are they making money off of you monthly for the platform fee, right, to access their platform, their inventory management system, their ability to connect you with other florists, they're now also charging you a transaction fee. And that transaction fee actually does not go down even if you pay for the higher plan. So, you know, at the end of the day, I still think it's worth it for me to test out. I'm not gonna let something like 7% deter me from doing it. And the way around it is honestly, you just price stems a little bit higher on that platform versus if someone reached out to you directly, right? So that's what I've been doing. I've been marking up stems on rooted farmers. But in any case, um, immediately when I signed up, I had a bunch of florists uh, reaching out to connect. Now that just means that they are interested in hearing from you in terms of what you have. So one of the issues though, was that I had a lot contacting me from Philadelphia. Now I live in Western central New Jersey where Philly is about, I would say like an hour, 40 minutes away. You know, it's certainly not a place where I would deliver frequently, but if there were enough florists in that area and enough volume, I would actually consider hiring someone to drive out there to deliver on my behalf. That being said, I've also had some other florists a little bit more local, you know, around New Jersey. I would say there's really only two florists who are realistically within a delivery zone that I would consider delivering to on a constant basis, but it's still nice to have that network of florists who could potentially be interested and that are relatively local. So Rooted Farmers could actually be a decent platform for me to sell. Now I've seen online, some people have been zero success. Um, I was actually just talking to another fellow flower farmer who said that she does really well on Rooted Farmers 
And one of the things I realized is that unless of they're checking your site, uh, they don't know what you have in terms of stems and inventory. So I actually have to proactively reach out to them. So um, I still haven't done that yet because I'm still trying to figure out how many stems I'm going to have for Valentine's Day and all that stuff. But once I figure that out, I will definitely give you guys an update as to whether or not Rooted Farmers is working for me. All right. So now that we've talked about cold calling, getting onto a Facebook group and Rooted Farmers, Let's talk about just what's worked for me and just high level plans going forward. So obviously that Facebook group was a success. I had a committed florist. One of the other things I did was there was that first florist that I tried to walk in um, and cold call and they weren't there. So I ended up reaching out to them on Instagram and they immediately responded. They were really nice to work with. One of the things I realized was that end of year is a bad time to walk into a florist or to talk to a florist you know they're super busy especially with christmas sales and after christmas this is kind of like their shutdown time there's really no such thing as new year's flowers unless of um it's just you know the four florists that i talk to that they don't do new year's flowers but um from my experience that was not a great time because they're just in this process of unwinding taking a break so some of the florists who i reached out to were like you know we're taking a few breaks in late december early january we'll be in touch later right so this was one of them um she just started coming back to the office or studio uh, earlier this week, you know, I think she takes some of the time in early January to do some planning. So she's already also pre-committed to buying, I think it's 30 stems for Valentine's Day just to test it out and see, you know, what she's getting from me and whether or not it's something that she wants to work with me in a more, um, in a more routine fashion going forward, right? So that worked really, really well. Right now, I only have two committed force. I have another local florist who I had planned on hitting up cold calling i never got a chance to go there um they're actually right next to my ob guy's office i went in for a checkup and then i was gonna go and then i ran out of time but they actually proactively reached out to me through that facebook group that i talked about and that is a florist that i'm going to prioritize reaching back out to so long story short you know there is demand from florists for local flowers. I mean, this should not be a surprise to anyone. I think most people who have experimented reaching out to florists typically find some level of success. And one thing to note is that it really is a game of probability, right? It's a game of one, are you reaching out to the right kind of florist? And two, just making sure that, you know, you're consistent you know, following up with them and that kind of stuff, right? So you will eventually find success. You just have to make sure you're looking at the right florist. Do not go after that wire service florist like I did. That guy kind of looked at me like, yeah, your prices are outrageous, but that was not a reflection of my prices. That was more of a reflection of the type of customers that he is getting. Last but not least, the availability template. So if you go into the description below, there will be a link for you to be able to open this availability sheet. And again, it is a in a PowerPoint format. Um, it's relatively straightforward in the sense that I have, uh, it, like it's laid out for you in terms of where you put photos, where you, um, you know, put text and all that stuff. So one of the harder things is acquiring photos and then cropping them to a circle. So I have a separate sheet after the first page to show you just some high level tricks on how you can do that instantly within PowerPoint. So um, that is something I can dive deeper into in another video. I think I just realized that a lot of people actually don't use PowerPoint, don't have access to PowerPoint. So I wasn't sure if it was really worth making a video for, but at the very minimum, at least you have a template. So that's all for today. I would love to hear your experiences with reaching out to florists, whether or not you used Rooted Farmers, how that's worked, for you and other ways that you've been able to connect with florists. So drop me some comments below and I will see you next time.